Beautiful. Shania Power, thank you for joining me on NRL Fans WA. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's much appreciated you coming on. I know you're a busy busy lady these days. You're um, playing in this, the sort of a second comp at the moment, uh, waiting for the next NRLW season to start. Um, yeah. How's that going for you at the moment? Um, no, really good. I think the biggest thing was having to shift all my stuff home again. I came back with um, a lot more gear than I left with, so... <laughs> you know, living on the Gold Coast to coming back to a country town, yeah. But uh, other than that, no, it's been really good. Um, um, we've got a really good side at, at the Gold Stars and we, we've been really well looked after. So got a big game this weekend versing um, the top of the table, uh, Capras. So yeah, it should be a big one. Oh, nice. Um, <clears throat> so with your career, you, you, start, you got signed by the Warriors first in the NRLW? Yes, correct. And then you've um, obviously with COVID and everything like that, they um, or disbanded, um, you know, for the, I guess for the moment. Um, and then you've joined the Gold, Gold Coast Titans. Um, did you actually go over to New Zealand and spend time over there with them, or was it just when they were based in Australia? Um, no. So the whole reason I, I, I was, it was almost a blessing in disguise, really, because the girls that could not come over from New Zealand because of COVID. Um, that opened up a, a spot for me. Yeah, so oh, okay. we ended up spending two and a half months, three months down on Manly Beach. <laughs> nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Um, yeah, then you joined the Gold Coast Titans um, in their inaugural season, and you ended up making the finals too. I mean, yourself also get, um, was it try of the year for the NRLW? Yes, it was. Yeah, so congratulations <laughs> on that. I, I remember watching that, so yeah. Um, how was how was that for for the team and the morale around the team uh, being the inaugural season for the Titans to make it to the finals? Um, it was a really special experience. We were really lucky. Oh, we are really lucky to have such a good support base. Um, like with all the people higher up, like our CEO, um, even the owners of Titans are just so invested um, in our team, and I think that really filtered through to the rest of us girls. And yeah, we just developed a really good bond. Yeah, cool. Do you um. Because I know there's more teams coming in um, this new NRLW season. Um, was it starting in July, I think it is? Um, so they put a few teams had put in a bid to add teams, but um, yeah. NRL rejected it just with the circumstances of like it, it being such a huge year, um, World Cup this year as well. And so with, with such a um, jam-packed year, they decided to hold off until next year. But definitely, um, I think a few clubs are putting in for 2023 season, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, how do you how do you guys feel um, the competitions come along from um, you know what is it four se four season at the NRL top NRLW now um, to where you are today? How do you you guys see it um, coming along? Oh, I think everything is um, is going the way it was supposed to. I was really worried at the start when they brought in two other teams like Titans and um, Parramatta that the I guess there wasn't going to be enough talent, but I was rudely mistaken I think um there is an urgency to really start bringing in more teams because the young girls that are coming through are are playing all the way from you know under sixes all the way to under 17s filtering into the women's comp which wasn't happening a few years ago but those um that talent is coming through now and and there it, it's a high talent pool so yeah I, there's a real urgency to start bringing in teams so it's really great that um NRL have decided or or put a motion forward to bring in two extra teams next year and then another two teams um, the year after that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, just also with your career, you know, you've even uh, represented the Indigenous team uh, on yeah. a couple of occasions and you got to represent Queensland as well. How, yes. how proud are the moments for those for you? Um, it, was really, it was really special because um, I, I wasn't really raised much in my culture. So when I got picked up, um, and the last three years that I've played um, in the All-Stars, I've learned so much more in those weeks. Um, and then the same origin was just an, another unreal experience. Just, I guess, growing up watching, you know, the likes of Lily Slater, Darren Lockyer, Jonathan Thurston, like Greg English, just to name a very few, um, you know, big fans of them growing up. So to be able to do on the same jersey and that they did and have that same experience is, is unreal, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I couldn't imagine the emotions going through you, through yourself, you know, representing your culture and poison, and you know, as well. Like, yeah, it would have been a dream. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing quite like 
either of those experiences. Like Warriors was great, even Titans was great, even coming back home and playing for my local is great, but those two jerseys are definitely, um, yeah, something else. Yeah, definitely. Um, who, when you were a kid, who was your um, idol growing up? Someone that you looked up to, maybe, maybe it wasn't a sports star, but someone that you looked up to and admired? Um, growing up, I think I've always admired, I guess everyone kind of goes back to their own mum, <laughs> but definitely my parents, 100%, like just their um, trust and bond and relationship is something that I really admire and um, it's something I really seek for in a future relationship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely that, like just the, how they communicate and how they make decisions, um, how they react to certain situations. Yeah, I've never met anyone like them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll come for you. Don't worry. Don't stress about that. I can tell you now. <laughs> uh, it took me a couple failed ones to get there, but yeah. Yeah, good on you. Um, you know, and like, I mean, I'm, I'm a father. Between me and my partner now, we've got 12 kids, so. Wow, congrats. Yeah, yeah. so and 10 of them live here at home, so my house is <laughs> full on. That's a household. Yeah, cool. Yes. Um, you know, and like, because when you agreed to come onto the chat, um, you know, obviously a few things happened, you know, um, but I wanted to use this because um, you're an NRLW player, you're playing elite level for women in sport. I mean, I've got um, four young girls here, you know, and I, I know my sons have got a cousin who plays um, NRL as well. She plays against the boys, um, you know, and they look up to women like yourself. Um, you know, have you got sort of any um, inspirational sort of stuff that you can share for the girls that do watch this? Um, yeah, definitely. I think this is the biggest piece of advice that I give to any young girl is that you never know who's watching, whether that be at training, outside of training. Um, and that's just in, in, in any form of what you're doing. Um, yeah. For example, I used to work at a cafe when I was younger and um, the one of the owners of the new job that I ended up going to, he actually saw me and he remembered me from something nice that I did for somebody at the cafe. And so when I applied for that job and went in for an interview, he's like, oh, I remember you, you did this. And yeah, like we'd love to have you. So yeah, you definitely never know who's watching, whether that's scouts um, coming and watching your games, like put 100% into everything, um, be the best everywhere. Because yeah, you just never know who, who's got their eye on you. And people talk, people talk. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Those things, you know, you always want to be putting your best foot forward. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, couldn't agree more. It's, um, yeah. Very beautiful what you said. Um, you because know, I asked my um my son's cousin, the um, you know, if they because of the girls playing in the league and she wants to get to where you are, you know, she had any questions for that she would ask you, and she gave me a couple. Um, one of them was, um, growing up, did you ever think that you'd get to where you are today? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I started playing when I was 17 and I just played because I love it. I love the relationships and friendships that you build. You know, I've got friends all over the place now because of um, because of rugby league. I'm so grateful for it. But yeah, definitely not. Um, it was all by ch I would say by chance, but same thing. Like just putting my best foot forward always and um, being the best person that I can be. And people people see that. So yeah, yeah. I'm Absolutely. from a small country town. So I'm I'm from a town of ten thousand people, about two hours away from um. Townsville yeah that's where I grew up and so yeah you can be found anywhere yeah absolutely yep um how do you think um you're looking at the where the NRLW is now and all the junior participations and all that sort of stuff how do you think um we can get it's sort of a two-part question how do you think we can get more young girls playing uh, league and how do you think we can get more um, indigenous um playing league um, I think the women's league needs more exposure. Um, social media is such a huge platform to use for advertising and the more clubs and, and um, you know, NRL advertise women's rugby league, I think the more it gets out there. So many young people are on social media. 
Um, so seeing that kind of inspiration pop up constantly on their feed, I think there's something that they could really look forward to. And in terms of Indigenous involvement, um, I know up here in North Queensland, we have like a, like NRL do um, like community visits and things like that. I think we could definitely use a lot more of that and um, taking more women out into those um, community visits. You know, they get the men out there, but I guess putting a bit more of the exposing more of the NRLW women's players and taking them out there for those kinds of uh, things. Or even having clinics where, you know, those girls get scouted and, and, and brought brought along to, you know, to Brisbane or to whatever to watch a game and things like that, just to see what, you know, they could strive for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what um, What's your, what seems to be your biggest achievement outside of the rugby league? Um, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm a, I'm a 25 year old person who's quite all over the shop. My, my life isn't set in one place, but I think my biggest achievement would be, um, <laughs> this is going to be really corny, but I feel like it's my personality. I think I've got a really, you know, I'm very lucky to have the family that I do have, but, um, I really take pride in the person that I am and, um, and being so open to helping others and, and being a listening ear. And um, I don't think we have enough people like me. <laughs> so that's something I, yeah, that's probably one of my biggest achievements outside of football. Um, I'm also um, a Christian, so I, I do go to church and um, I really love being involved in that space and um, helping people, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And I think, you know, love... I've watched a lot of your social media stuff on Instagram and, um, you know, I'm always watching what you do, um, you know, and from what I've seen on the field as well, you know, your personality comes across in the field, you know, and it's, you know, you're a very bubbly person and you seem to be that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, teammate that people want in their team. I mean, the other person I, I sort of reference that to is um, Kennedy Sherrington from Parramatta. She's yep. like that as well. Um, you know, he's a very bubbly. He's always on social media, you know, doing all the TikToks and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's it comes across in the way that you play the game too. You know, he's a he's a hard at what you do, and but he's a, a, a fair. And you know, um, I think the girls or the women, sorry, um, trust that in in their players and their teammates when they see that. So, yeah. yeah, relationships are such a huge thing. I, I, you know, in building any kind of, you know, your your team at home in your ha own household, um, that's important to build relationships and trust. And and same thing when it comes to a, a, a rugby league team, you got to build those relationships and, and trust. Yeah, absolutely. To be um, successful. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, it, in your life, um, you know, maybe not just in uh, your regular league career, but have you had any... Uh, like a low point, um, maybe you've gone through maybe a depression sort of thing, um, or maybe even some injuries and setbacks. Have you gone through anything, anything like that? Um, I guess because I am so close with all of my family. I'm one of six siblings um, and they all live really close to home. So my biggest struggles have been when I've had to go away for a longer period of time. Um, I'm so lucky that I've got, we've got, you know, um, cell phones and things like that and FaceTime to stay in contact. But it, it can be really hard um, going away for such a long time and, and not having the time to be able to see your family. That's probably yeah. been my biggest struggle. I've been very blessed not to ever have um, any serious injuries requiring any kind of surgery or things like that. Um, I guess another setback or hard times that I would go through is maybe self-doubt. There's a lot of time, you know, there's so much talent around and when you're in such a competitive space, even though it is so much fun, there's a lot of pressure to, that you put on yourself because, like, to perform and, and be at that standard. So it can be really hard to, or not, yeah, it can be easy and it can be hard to stay yeah. mentally healthy throughout those periods. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, you know, with... <clears throat> you're you're living away and stuff. How did how did your family take that? Um, oh, they're they're super supportive. You know, we've got group chats and things like that, and I'm calling mum every week. You know, and dad, and 
getting on the FaceTime with them too and having chats. You know, they miss me. They, we, I mean, me and mum, we're the biggest sooks. We always cry when <laughs> we leave each other. Usually I try to wait till I've like driven off before the, the waterworks start, but <laughs> no, they're, they're all very supportive and um, they know that I miss them. So they keep in contact. Yeah, cool. Do they get to come down and watch you play? Um, oh, I've never asked them to. If I did no. ask them to, I know that they would do anything to um, come and drive drive down and see me. They came down to my first origin. Yeah. Um, but because it is such a long way and there's so many of them, you know, flying's not really yeah. an option. It's just too expensive. So, But then I don't really like them driving 16 hours in a car either um, yeah. all the way down to come watch. So. I'm like, oh, you just, you'll see it better on TV, even though deep down I, I would love them to be there. I'm like, you, yeah, watch it on the TV. It's okay. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, how do you think um, the with the NRLW, the, the pay that you guys are getting, um, obviously compared to the men, like obviously the, the comparison is going to be always there. And the men have been around, the men competition has been around for a long time and it's been on TV for a long time. How do you think that the NRL needs to get to, um, you know, equal pay um, in the, in that regards? I think you're right. Like, there's there is never going to be equal pay, not for a long time at least. I would I'd put twenty years on it, 15, yep. 20 years on it, only because obviously um, we don't have all the teams and all that kind of stuff. But I think, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong that you know. I, I personally believe that there's no, nothing wrong with not getting equal pay you pay for what people want to watch and yeah. at the moment the men's have a huge following and whatnot I would say though that um the amount that we are getting at the moment is not enough not enough um yeah. especially for somebody like myself who needs to relocate um yeah. and I make that choice to relocate as well like don't get me wrong but um I've seen I've been lucky enough not to struggle, but I've seen some girls really struggle with um, financially and it does take its toll, you know, on their mental health um, and on their performance on the field. So yeah. I'm not talking about, you know, 30, 40 grand up, you know, yeah. increase, but another 10 grand, like, I don't think that would be too hard for them to manage and the amount that it would help the female game and, female individuals would yeah we definitely need just a little bit more it's just not enough yeah just not enough yeah. <laughs> do a lot of do a lot of the girl, uh, women in your team do they have jobs outside of football yeah so like say the normal working week of one of the girls who works full-time down that um down in the gold coast one of them would work from say like you know eight to three o'clock drive straight to training, do the rat testing and stay at training from 3.30 to sometimes 8, quarter past 8 at night, driving home and still having to tend to kids. And we would train, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So it's three times a week. Wednesday's probably your only day off because you'd either fly or have your captains run on Friday, travel, play over the weekend and then straight back into it on Monday. Yeah. Um, so I was lucky enough that I, I did end up working while I was down there just because like, I feel like I would have been broke, like yeah. proper skint if I didn't work, but I was working yeah five days a week at a high school, um, just in a mentoring program and teacher rating. And so, yeah, I was working nine to three driving straight to training and yeah, not getting home till quite late. It was very, very exhausting. Yeah. Worth it. I mean, worth, totally what? worth it. But. It's Absolutely, not- but yeah, like you, like we were saying before, the pay, the pay needs to go up a bit, you know, to help these women like yourself out that, you know, so you aren't struggling so much and um, rushing around because you know, like you said, some of them are mothers, got kids at home, their partners as well, all that sort of stuff. But it takes a toll on the family as well. Hundred percent, and I think if you want to get like, you know, they're calling us professional athletes, but we're not training and living like professional athletes and then when we get out on the field the standard that they expect is is really high and we we, I mean obviously like we've done a really good job I think the girls all the women across all teams have done a really exceptional job in improving how resilient we are but um to get the best performance out of us 
we need to yeah we need more time to rest <laughs> and, yeah, and have that mental um mental health yeah absolutely um you know i i sort of look at the nrlw now as um the way the arl was before the super league stuff come in um where the guys were professional athletes so you know but they're still having to have a job a monday to friday job you know, so they weren't making all that sort of money and then the Super League thing happened and then all the pays from then on just increased. So, um, yeah, obviously I'm not saying that that's, that needs to happen, but um, I think that, you know, it took a long time for the the men's game to get to where it is. Um, you yeah. know, I, the women's game, I mean, I, I love watching the women's game. Like you guys, like the skill level that you guys show is just incredible. I mean, like me, my partner... Um, and my kids, we all watch every single regular regu league game on the weekend. We watch all the women's games, you know, and it's we're always invested in watching them. So, you know, it's um, I know that there's a lot of people that prefer watching a lot of the women's games because it reminds them of it was back in the 80s and 90s. It yeah. was the, the women just get the ball and they just hit it straight up. They don't, there's no fancy sort of stuff at times, you know, and it's it's I guess, um, strip back from what yeah. the expensive game is now. And I think that's what um, a lot of people love about the, watching the women play. No, definitely. We hear that all the time. And I guess that's what's so beautiful and awesome about our game is that it does take people back. Um, and, and on that, you know, with the growth of the men's game, I think our women's game in, in this time have the opportunity to grow a lot quicker than the men's did just with yeah. the social media and, and things like that you know you do hear stories of those old guys working day jobs as well like having that full-time job and then going to training and you know only earning 30 40k a year so but yeah. you know we're in that space too at the moment and it's going to be like this for a while and that's okay but as I think it will grow a lot quicker um than what it was back in the day for the men oh absolutely um, oh, so you, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, are you guys part of the um, RLPA as well? Yeah, so we um, we do obviously, yeah, have the RLPA, yes. Yeah, yeah and we've got definitely. girls who are like spokespeople. Yeah. So we've, there's a few girls in each team who are, re yeah, represent, are representatives of that and, and um, mm -hmm. have direct communications with the RLPA. But like myself, if I had an issue, I can contact them anytime. Oh, cool. Well, that's good. That makes it a lot easier for you guys to, you know, get your voices heard, um, you know, and especially you need that sort of these days, you know, like you're saying with the pay, you know, they're not, they aren't going to pay you unless someone sort of steps up and says, hey, we need more money. Yeah. Because they'll try to keep it all for themselves until someone says something. No, absolutely. And that's why I really admire Ali Brigginshaw. Um, when I first made Origin, we had a meeting with um, some members. I don't even remember who they were now. And she just went ham, like just full on was like, this is not acceptable, blah, blah, blah. And I was sitting back going, oh my gosh, like this girl's crazy. But um, I honestly now like look back at that. That was 2019, 2020. And I look back at that now and think the game wouldn't be even half what it is now without people like her stepping up and saying like, we need more. Um, and she's obviously one who's been around for a very long time. So yeah, um, yeah no, we're very grateful for people like her. Yeah, who absolutely. have really yeah, joined up with the RLPA and, and whatnot and getting our voices heard. Yeah, definitely. Um, just I've got a couple more questions for you, then, you know, it won't keep it too long. Um, okay. Just um, for the for the girls that do watch these young girls um, that are going to watch, you know, what's a, what's a training session or training week look like for you guys? Um, so I'll go off Titan. So we were training three times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, Mondays was more of like um, conditioning and skills. So we'd do a gym session and then or, or we'd do the gym session afterwards. And um, on the on field, we'd do a lot of um, conditioning skills. And, um, and then on Tuesday was more of just a skills day. Obviously, yeah. after doing all that conditioning, you know, you need a bit of time to rest. Um, we'd still do a gym session. And then on Thursday, we'd come back and get hammered again. So that was um, that's for pre-season. And then the week leading into season was a lot more um, play-based and skill-based um, leading into those first games. 
And then um, we'd have a captain's run on, say, a Friday, Saturday. Yep. Fly out, um, do a bit of team bonding, play, and then and fly home on Sunday. So that was the yeah. usual week um, once we started, yeah, in RLW. Yeah, cool. Um, I don't know if you follow, if you how far you follow the men's game, you know, but, you know, with the expansion of the NRL, um, you know, the Dolphins coming in next year, um, what do you reckon the Perth, Perth chances of being the 18th team would be? What's that, sorry? Perth being the 18th team for the NRL expansion, because obviously they're not going to have 17 teams for too long. What do you think the chances of Perth having that 18th team are? Well, I don't really follow rugby league that hard. I don't, I don't know what the footy is like over at Perth, but I think it would be a very similar situation to what we've got here at North Queensland Gold Stars is that Perth is a whole section of untouched talent. Um, yeah. So I think if they were to put a team in, that would be really exciting. I think um, they could bring a really strong team into the competition. Uh, do, are they putting in a bid? Um, yeah, they're looking at putting in the bid for the ADC. Um, no, yeah, I 100% yeah. think that they should do that. Yeah. That would be awesome. And I think, you know, we've... Um, We've, we've sent a lot of kids, uh, people over to, over to the east, um, just off the top of my head, Kennedy and Ruben Sherrington, um, you know, are from Perth. They played over here in Perth, you know, and I know that there's, the talent is here, even for a women's team, even if they're, from, for me personally, if Perth started with a women's team in the NRL, just to see how the um, everything goes, the attraction for the game here, um, yeah, I reckon it would be perfect, like, because we've got so much talent here. Nearly yeah. every every club around here has women's tackle, you know. Yeah. Um, and there's kids going from your yeah, under sixes all the way up to seventeens, um, you know, with the with the girls. And there's there's heaps of them. So I know the talents here for that, but yeah, that's just I guess a little thing I could put in. Yeah. No, yeah, I definitely think that they should. You know, like I said, up here at North Queensland, we, you know, they they want to put in a bid to put in a cowboy side and. At first, I, again, I was a bit like, oh, is that really a good idea? But we've got, yeah, a whole bunch of untouched talent, um, yeah. just girls itching to get in the door. And it's really difficult to move out of town. So to have, you know, a base at home, yeah, we'd, I think you guys should definitely look at putting in a bid. Yeah, definitely. Um, just the last one. Um... This is from, uh, like I said, uh, my niece as well. She put in, where do you see yourself in five years? What's your niece's name? Uh, she, uh, Ruben, I think it is. Oh, shit, Ruben. I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember her name. <laughs> well, hi, <It's>, it, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's um, my, my, boy's, my boy's cousin, so. Oh, yeah, okay, no, that's okay. Um, No, but in the next five years... It's a really hard one because I'll be 30 in five years so I'd really love to still be playing rugby league but I would also really love to start a family um and whichever one comes first um I, I'm definitely still really keen to build um with titans at the moment if, if that's you know if that opportunity arises for me again otherwise um once cowboys come in I'd, I'd love to come home and and build my home here and um yeah, build a really strong culture, you know, set the platform and build a benchmark there at, at Cowboys so that I leave it in a, in a better pit condition than what it started. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for you. Um, Shania Powell, thank you for joining me on NRL Fans WA. I really appreciate you giving me your time. No, thank you so much for having me. I know it's been um, a bit of back and forth before we've been <laughs> able to do this. So thank you for your patience and thank you for asking me. I, I, I'm really um, humbled by it. No, all good. Uh, my best luck with everything um, with the season now and the upcoming season. Um, much love to you and the family. Um, yeah, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Talk soon. All right, see ya. Bye.